so essentially for today, I want you to give you confidence in your technique and an understanding of what it takes to be a bit more proficient, to be able to kick further, have more penetration. Start with a bit of fun, then we're gonna go into some yeah, distance type stuff, on the run, and then goal kicking. So grab yourself a size five footy, spread out. All right, opposite foot only, let's go, opposite foot. <laughs> nice. Oh, whoa, whoa. Coming around, still finishing straight. Give yourself some space. You can push it back a little bit. All right, snaps, only snaps, let's go. Go off with some torps, just some little torps to your teammate. Yep. Of course you'd be good at them. Old school, mate. You used to get taught them, yeah. Bloody oath. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Kenzie. Real cruisy warm up, just a bit of that exploration. Kind of get a bit creative with it. Like I said, footy's not robotic and straight all the time. It's the beauty of it. There's so many different types of styles and ways to kick the ball. So make sure you incorporate that into your warm up. Get, a, get, get that good relationship with the footy. Okay, so first thing, let's get into some distance kicking off a couple of steps. And I just want to get a, I want to get a sense to see how far you guys can kick. I'm just going to come around and get a good look at you. And then we'll get into a drill that's going to really help to develop the power and the uh, contact point of your kicking. Okay, so punch these in low and hard. All right, if you're feeling good, go back a little bit. Like that, yeah, about five meters back. Keep punching through firmly. Get the ball in the forward tilt. Really open up, let it rip. Let's kick. All right, that was probably just an extended warm up there. I just wanted to make sure you could really open up and get fully loose with it, and I could just get a bit more of an idea, okay? So when we're kicking for distance, like I was saying there, we might need to get sometimes a bit more of an arc in it, right? We're not always kicking straight. It's very much that natural tendency to come around, get more of that hip rotation into it, okay? Just a couple of things to that. To allow you to be still consistent with it and get, ensure that you're getting all your force through the ball, try to match the angle of the ball with the angle of your foot. So instead of being up and down, foot coming through straight, our, foot, our legs now coming around like this. So the ball, more often than not, needs to match it so we can still make good impact and get the force through the ball. We're gonna go into this drill now where we're gonna keep it straight. We're gonna strip it right back. There's no momentum in the kick. You have to develop that from bringing your leg back using your glute and hamstring and then powering through with your hip flexors and quads. Just gonna work on getting the force through the ball, right? Leg comes back, my core is engaged, and we're keeping our balance, okay? We then push back, and I can get a bit more penetration into it, so I'm coming through a bit harder. Again, process orientated, not so much the result. Yes, we want a good result, but not at the detriment or expense of the technique, okay? If you're just bringing it back here and you're, you're guiding it, like, what's the point, okay? So experiment, open up, come through firmly. Then we're gonna push back, push back, push back, just like we just did, but still off no step. Core's engaged, nice work. Yeah, hold it there, good. All right, if you're feeling good, if you've been hitting these targets, your teammate can go back. You can come through a bit quicker now, Still, no step. Good, really bring that leg back. Overemphasize it, come through quickly. A bit more upright, yep. See how you're falling backwards? Yeah. Yep, we wanna try and keep, keep it going forward, yeah. Nice. All right, again, if you're feeling good, let's go back. Let's really open up now, just coming through as fast as you can. It's like a gym exercise. You're just letting rip. Great hit, Craig. Really efficient, mate. Good. So you're not really stepping, you're not really getting your leg swing back. You're not utilizing the leg swing. So that's why it's gotta be no step, come back and let the leg do the work. Okay, no step, bring your leg into the back swing. Leg goes back, leg goes back, keep going, keep going. Yep, now kick. Yeah, nice, good job. 
you, you're training your body to have be stronger and more powerful through the hip flexors. It's hit. All right, last kick. Nice hit. So again, it's one of the most sport kicking specific drills you can do to, to kick further, right? You can. There's plenty of gym exercises, but this one's actually kicking, coming, bringing your leg back, firing through. Okay, so the concept there with with kicking for distance, with penetration, it's 90 to 99 percent leg span, leg leg speed. Okay, leg speed. The last little bit, depending on where your technique lies, is your position at contact. So what the ball orientation's like, your body position, are you leaning back, are you off balance, is the ball on an angle, okay? So the higher level you're kicking is, the more likely the ball's gonna be in a better spot and you're gonna punch through it. So it may only make up 2% of what allows you to kick the ball further. 90 to 99% is gonna be leg speed, increasing leg speed. So a couple of ways you can do that, right? Bringing your leg further back allows more distance to accelerate in the forward swing. So that's strength in your glute and hamstring to do that. And then coming through with strong hip flexors and quads like we just did, right? Having mobility through your hips to then allow that to come back as well. Just a small degree change in your mobility can produce pretty good results on the back end. Your flexibility and mobility your strength, power, and stability, and then technique stuff. So I mentioned before about getting a bit of an arc. It's kind of like a little bit of a cheat way to do it. There's been studies to show that a longer last step can help you kick further. And typically what it's from is opening up that hip more, right? That same concept of getting the hip further back. So going on the arc allows your hip to get further back, come through quicker, a longer last step, allows that hip to open up to again, get more distance to accelerate into the kick. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah, okay. You've just worked no step, you worked on the power and you worked on the contact point. I wanna now see it emulate into a few steps like we did at the start. Just a few kicks, I wanna work on quality, not necessarily quantity. Oh, okay, so that, not a bad hit actually. Did, where did it feel like it came off your foot? Inside, yeah, so you went around but ball was on the inside still. So that's what I talk about, matching the ball with your foot, then you'll make all the force through it. And you've got a fast leg, so if you can just get that contact point figured out, then you'll be a lot more efficient. Nice hit. How'd that feel? Uh, feel like it clean contact. Wasn't clean? Okay. Again, to get better leverage on it, slightly higher contact point's gonna be better. I reckon, when you felt like it wasn't quite clean, it's probably just a little bit too jammed. Yeah. yeah. All right, efficiency here, kicking up through the ball. Yeah, lovely, smooth. All right, honestly, if anything, you could start to work to get the ball a bit more upright or even slightly leaning back, because then that allows you to get a bit more leverage on the ball. That was tilted forward, kind of a bit more of a, of a punch. Okay. Just have a little play around with it. See. It's kind of gets like that, yeah. Nice balance and control. And see how, you, it was a drill, right? Your leg was through, you put everything you could through the ball. If anything, I might have said that maybe you're holding back a little bit, Leading like, back. no, holding back within right. yourself. Like, I reckon you could have actually launched into that a bit harder yeah. to get that leg swing going. Yeah, yeah but overall, pretty good. Oh, okay. So you've got a fast leg too, but you're pushing the ball down too low, yeah. too quickly, so it's getting down really low. Yeah, like hit the bottom of the foot there. So if you get that up a little bit, then you're gonna get the ball off on a better trajectory to, to go yeah, further. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah sweet, cheers. Let's get into on the run kicking. Similar concept applies, like if we wanna punch that ball low, or we are on the run and kicking it further, still wanna get efficient force through the ball. Fast leg. Yeah, it's great punch. It's nice. It's very nice. Lefty gun. We're going to make it a bit more competitive, a bit more pressure. It'll be a race between this group and that group. One on one. -on -one. So we'll roll the ball to you. You've got a first person to hit their teammate down the other end. Punch through hard. Ooh. 
โอ้โอ้ช่องมาแบกคือเหตุไหมว่าดอนโอ้เจ็ดเฮ้ยอุ้ยโอ้ย that's it nice work alright nice work let's go into some goal kicking now goals are there mate Oh, it's a good oh, hit. Go. Never in doubt. Never in doubt. All right, he's up. Hey, Dylan, remember when we won a flag together? Lefties just don't miss. The way I break it down is into thirds. So you've got short, mid, and long range goals. You really want to emulate as much as you can kicking to your teammate. The only difference is that you've got to kick over the top of someone. You're kicking over the person on the mark. But the most basic, simple, easy kick that we can do is just off a couple of steps, nice, balanced, steady ball drop, right? Everything flows from that. If we then go into our mid-range kicks, it's a little bit further, we might need a bit more. But again, if you can kick off a few steps, you're just trying to emulate the calmness, maybe it's, maybe it's a bit more, right? Same thing when you get out longer, you might need a bit more momentum. So you, you build into it. But there's no reason why you need a 10 step run up to kick the ball when you're 20 meters out. All that does is you, one, you, you might get too close to the person on the mark. Two, you start swinging the ball around and it's not steady. So we, I just showed you off no step, you could kick 35, 40. So you, why would you need 10, 12 steps in your run up? What we learn as punters is that you can develop enough momentum off just two steps. And that allows you to be steady, focused, and just worrying, focusing on what's really important, which is being balanced and having that nice guide and nice contact. I'm not saying to you guys to kill off two steps, but understand that three to five is really all you need. And it's like, look, I get it. And I'm, I'm not saying you must kick off three steps or five. Like it took me a long time to develop that. The biggest thing, right, going from kicking around the ground to kicking a set shot goal is you're kicking over someone on the mark more often than not so let's eliminate them out the pro out of the equation by coming far getting far enough back where you know they're not an issue and then having a short run up if you have a really long run up there's more steps for errors to occur you start coming up and you're like hang on wait is he or, or, and then you you either go around to try and not kick it into them then that throws things off you get too close and you kick high or you'll just kick it into them. And probably once around in the AFL, the person on the mark will affect the kick. Not so much now with the new rule, but does that make sense? So let's eliminate them out of our equation, simplify your approach, focus on what's important, kick it into the bucket. Yeah, perfect. So part of your routine, I wouldn't necessarily say count your steps from there, because this could be a different person on the mark each time or it could be really windy. Just come back to a point where it's like, yep, here, I know he's not an issue. Yeah. It might be a oh, one step back, I'm no doubt in my mind. It's also allowing you to get as close as possible without him being an issue. Yeah. And then take your steps back if you know your steps. Good hit, a little bit on the inside, but nice follow through. Oh, good job, good job. Nice. So even though the ball drop was a little bit funny, yeah. you just smooth through it. Yeah. Smooth through it. Good follow through. Blackie taught me that, actually. Who did? Simon Black. Yeah. yeah. I, I was going to say, what did he say? What was his term? Routine. Routine. Routine, yeah. Routine. Well, Matthew, I remember Matthew Lloyd saying to me, like, he would just make sure he would kick through no matter what, because then if it was a little bit off, you could still kind of push it through the goals, whether it's even if it's not spinning properly. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. With the routine, you do something at the top of your mark, don't you? Yeah, perfect. I'll touch on that in a sec. So probably the next part with kicking is like, and goal kicking is like your mental state of mind. So talking to Jake here, right about your routine, you just want to go over what you do at the top of the mark? Um, I always spin the ball four times, take two swings, and on the breath out, that's when I go every time. So that to me is a routine. That's Rafael Nadal 
doing his things before he serves, no matter what the serve is. It could be a smash serve, it could be a slice, he's still doing the same routine. So I mentioned how three different spots, three different ranges for your kicks. Your run up doesn't need to be the same, but do that routine that locks your focus in every time. Okay, keep that the same. Like, like Rafa, it's not always the same serve, but it's the same routine, same thing. It's not always gonna be the same kick. You might do a snap or you might do, like I said, it's literally just you're 10 meters away and you're just kicking through it. Do the same routine though, that sets your mind, sets your focus, stops you thinking about everything else. And then when you go through your technique, you're not really thinking. It's the routine, you calm, then you go and execute. But other than that, thank you so much for coming out and I hope you got a lot out of it. Stay in touch, stay in touch with each other. And yeah, let me know if you ever need anything. Awesome.